all right? And um, I'd like to, to um, raise a glass and toast you for 10 very, very, very successful years. What an amazing collection. Cheers, Daniel. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Max. You can hear me? Yes, I can. I'm so sorry for the technical glitch. No, it's all right. Hey, modern technology, right? <laughs> what an amazing show. I'm, I'm, I'm still reeling from it. Okay, Max, let's start off with you asking me a question. Ask me, who am I wearing? Who are you wearing today, Daniel? I am wearing Max Tan. <laughs> You know, Max, Thank I've you. always been a fan of yours ever since I saw you, uh, your graduate collection at NAFA. And uh, I have seen you grow to strength. You are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, for those of you who are new to the Max Tan label, Max, why don't you tell us how you started, your inspiration, your aesthetic, and um, why you wanted to start the label in the first place? Well, I started the label in 2010, and I'm celebrating my 10 years this year. Um, as a young designer back then, I, I really just went for what I feel that I thought I should be doing for the rest of my life. And well, it was a lot of courage and, it just, and I just, you know, plunged myself right into it. You know, there wasn't so much of, uh, oh, is this a business I'm starting? Should I think about how to plan the business and all sorts of things. I, I really literally just went for it when the opportunity came. And so for those who are unfamiliar with the brand, um, I mainly do monochromatic garments. I play with a lot of shapes, um, um, a lot of experiments with deconstruction, reconstruction. Um, if you can sum it up, it's basically black kind of shapeless garments. Shapeless with a story. That, that's most important. Every single Max Tan piece has a story has an aesthetic behind it. And what I really love about this piece is you can wear it in five or six completely different ways. So I'm going to probably wear this several more times during the course of the front row. Um, so for those of you who are following the show, <laughs> you can follow all the different ways I, I wear my Max Tart, right? Okay, uh, if someone wants to buy your collection, where can they buy your pieces? So I do run an online store. It's via my official website. It's www.max-tan.com. So if not, you can visit my Instagram. The, the link is there. Um, and just to share a little bit about how um, the business, I, I run the fashion business in Singapore. Um, when I first started in 2010, I started with the Paco Next Next initiative. And I think that was a um, funded uh, heavily by Spring, and it was an initiative um, by Spring Singapore. And back then, I, I gained some traction, and I started to gear into a wholesale business. So um, with regards to that, uh, I've tried trade shows, and I'm currently represented by an agent in Paris. So that's where um, buyers will place your orders with me. I produce them, and I keep a very limited amount of stocks for retail in Singapore. Okay, speaking of Paris, um, I, I've got a whole bunch of questions for you, but I'm going to jump the gun and talk about your very, very first collection. You know, some people say it's all about timing, it's all about luck, uh, it's all about being at the right place at the right time, having the right person see your collection. I think, Max, you tick all the boxes, but you have one extra box that you have ticked, which is you have an amazing aesthetic. Uh, tell us about your um, overnight success. So, um, to elaborate on this overnight success, um, back to your question on my first collection, um, I was a um, struggling young designer. I could not afford to pay for what we call um, a trend forecasting service. So, um, in this trend forecasting website, it's called stylesite.com, and it's now under and part of WGSN. Um, I was listed as one of the top 10 spring summer collections of that year, that season. <clears throat> and I was alongside big names such as your great Alexander McQueen, Valentino and Miu Miu. And then right at the very tip of the last spot, um, there was Max Tan and, and nobody knew who I was. And because I, I didn't have the means to subscribe to this service, I had friends who 
who are um, working in bigger firms told me about the news and I'm like, just, uh, you must be kidding me. And then I got a lot of emails, which I thought were spams. <laughs> like who, who, why the sudden interest? And, and that's where I realized, hey, it's for real. And, and I started to gain a lot of eyeballs and that's where I really went for this um, Scandinavia market. So um, I, I participated um, in Amsterdam Fashion Week under Moda Fabric. Um, the next season where I presented the opening looks of the front row video, um, the cat years, that was really iconic. And subsequently, it, I moved over to Copenhagen and I was active there for a few years. Yeah, before I finally moved on to my Paris agent. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like a fairy tale story, but a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of talent, blood, sweat, sleepless nights that have gone into uh, the so-called overnight success. And uh, Max, you're one of the hardest working people I know. Uh, this Putting to, together the show has been a wonderful walk down memory lane. Can you tell us the inspiration behind this particular virtual runway show that uh, we've just seen on the front row? So this being my 10th year in the business, I really wanted to have a huge celebration. But of course, with the um, COVID-19 situation going on, um, I have to kind of shove my plans aside. So um, I thought it would be a nice way to put together a, a, collect, a collection of looks, um, which I have not been able to show in the past. And remember, we had a little chat um, back in my studio and you we were talking about how we should bring back those pieces. And, you know, just a quick refresh for those who have followed me over the last 10 years and, and also serves as an introduction to the people who have not followed or are new to my works um, to give them a quick recap of who I am. Well, I mean, I, I think it's, it's a wonderful... Uh... It's a wonderful story of your journey and you can see the evolution, but at the same time, I must say that over the past 10 years, you have evolved, but you have stuck very true to your signature style, which I think is admirable because I don't see a lot of designers um, hanging on to the aesthetic so strongly and improving on the aesthetic. So um, again, uh, <laughs> I am a big fan, Max. All right, now we Thank talk you. about your overnight success and being discovered um, Viger and all that, and um, you know the new media now is a social media. What are your thoughts on social media now as the new form of marketing? Well, to be completely honest, I, I was a technology idiot a few years before this. So, um, so with the help of a lot of partners and, 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 and people that I talked to, I started to go into Instagram and Facebook. I was more active on Facebook and I knew nothing about Instagram shopping and nothing about taking good catalog pictures and all that. So I think the, the new social media is definitely a new way to sell. And just likewise, like myself, I, I shop on Instagram too. And, and it's just, it, it has almost become a daily news feed. The first thing you do in the morning, just to scroll through your feed. And if you see something beautiful and possibly brighten up your day, you know, just, you know, just click on it, buy it. And I hope it's a max ton. <laughs> right. Okay. How, uh, tell us about your, your thought process when you're putting a collection together. How, how does max time develop a collection? Let us delve into your, uh, into the man behind max time, the, the working max time, the creative max time. Hmm. Um, well, let me start by saying that I don't really think I, I mean, the media has kind of portrayed me as this avant-garde designer, but I've never really thought of myself that way. And, and the way I develop a collection is still very, um, traditional in a way. I mean, I still go through the sketchbooks and all, um, but um, with regards to thinking about um, the aesthetic of Max Tan, is it an avant-garde label? Is it a ready-to-wear label? I, I don't really think about that. And that's possibly a, a flaw of mine, but um, I'm also really glad to have a lot of people who have kind of stuck to me and stuck with me throughout the years, um, listening to how I tell my stories and my journey throughout the last 10 years with, with the collections. So um, just to walk you through a little bit about my creative process, 
it really can go anything from collaging to um, draping and deconstructing things. Um, um, one thing that I really do um, want to share is, uh, well, I, I think um, a lot of times um, people will look at my collection and ask me about your my inspiration. And I'll be like, oh, hey, the inspiration is, is this. And they, they kind of say, um, well, you know, I, I don't kind of see that connection or a link to the end product. Um, and and that's where I, I kind of um, want to have, want to argue on that. Well, if, if you look closer, there is some hints of it. But I always say to people that um, the inspiration and the teams all um, inspire and help me develop in my development process and they don't necessarily necessarily um, will be a very literal translation of what you see at the end you know being the garments the, comp the, the final looks yeah so inspiration fuels my development but not necessarily um, your final garments how has COVID affected you i mean this is this seems to be the buzzword and to some people they just don't want to talk about COVID anymore but it's something that's unavoidable that um, it has affected all of us in many many different ways but um, I see also a lot of people a lot of the designers on the front row you know um, have have pivoted have adapted and um, are doing thriving business so um, how has how has max time the business been affected by COVID and what have you done about it so um, this year um... Fortunately, unfortunately, I, I decided to take a creative break. So I worked really, really hard last year so that I could take a break this year. And yes, I am affected, but being a really small business, um, the, 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 the things that affect me is really um, very uh, minuscule, I would say. Um, but also um, with this new normal happening, it has helped me um, open up new and help me open up new new channels and help me to um, rethink the business, give me a chance to reflect on what I could have done better. And I'm not gonna lie, it's not perfect. Um, I'm still a work in progress. So so this this ten um, during this COVID situation, it was really a good time for me to rethink how the business should be run, um, whether I can find a way forward. Um, just to let you in on a little bit of secret, we are going through a small rebranding and I can't wait to share my new works for Spring Summer 21 with you guys. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, I want to add a little uh, Max Tan story of my own. When we were on location for this virtual fashion festival uh, for the Max Tan show, uh, we bumped into a, a lady who wanted to know more about the collection and she became a huge fan. In fact, Almost immediately, she made an appointment with Max to go to his atelier to shop. So that, that is the effect of your clothes, Max. Um, now, Max, you have also dabbled in theatre uh, and you have won awards for that. Why, why theatre? Was that something that you wanted to do to uh, stretch your artistic limit or were you bored with fashion? <laughs> well, definitely it's something that I'm... And theatre is an art form that I deeply admire and have respect for. So um, because this is such a small label and company um, and we work on a wholesale basis, which means uh, we are working for two seasons a year, um, the collect we, we don't, we unfortunately don't produce like 40 looks of 60 looks collection where we have put up a huge show. And in between there are some gaps and some times where we really want to get creative with other stuff besides just doing fashion. So that's where um, I got into theatre and started doing costume designing for a lot of theatre companies. Um, I was also the principal costume designer for NDP 2017 and that was just um, an amazing experience. All right, before we wrap up, I just have a, a couple of questions more for you. Uh, you are, um, a wholesale model and doing two seasons uh, a year. Moving ahead, um, any plans to go seasonless now that a lot of major brands have decided to go seasonless? What about Max Khan? Well, um, yes, I think 
I, I do not think um, the seasonless um, approach is like a good textbook answer for everything, but um, that's where I have to highlight um, garments should be better designed to withstand the, the test of time. I, I still have customers who are wearing my stuff from 10 years ago and and I remember you produced that show back in Napa where you had an amazing army of models wearing wearing the clothes and and I, I just bumped into a customer that day and she was wearing one of that and I'm like oh what a, what a nice coincidence and I mean this brought brought back um brought the point of sustainability back to to me like um sustainability shouldn't even be a marketing um, tool it, it it should be a must in in this world and and it should start from just buying um, quality stuff and things that will last you for a very very long time um, so with that I, I think yes seasonless is the way to go but um, buying clothes that can that allows one person to uh, a wearer to to wear across seasons across years is ideally um, what I think I should be designing for Wow, wise words indeed. And I think that thing which I, uh, I see as the future of fashion and uh, the future of fashion design. Uh, okay, before we wrap up, any final thoughts on uh, collaborations? What are your thoughts on collaborations? I love collaborations. And um, I'm always open to having people and people outside the industry collaborate with me. And on this note, um, I really do want to bring up a very special person. Um, her name is Miss Paige Parker. I did a Chinese New Year collection with her last year. And, and she challenged me to do a, a, a chinoiserie collection and a collection, a capsule collection inspired by the Tsipao or and, and, and Chinese wear. And, and I mean, that was, uh, to me, was, uh, was a huge success because I've never really tried with, um, um, played with a lot of colors before and, and, and having, you know, just conversations with her really helped me understand, hey, maybe um, a woman doesn't want it, her clothes to be full on tan shape, like what I always do all the time. And she really do, did help me to understand um, the consumer mindset better. And that was great feedback. And, throughout the years. I think speaking about collaborations, that's, um, in fact, you choreographing my graduation collection, the NAFA huge collection, right down to my young designers collection. I mean, and, and, and even now front row, it's, um, it's, it's always good to have um, collaborators come on and offer you a new eye because, you know, I especially like how we work together this time round. Um, you know, you, you presented an idea, we had a chat about it, I, I presented the looks to you and, and you kind of curated it and styled it in a way that is, you know, it's still very representative of Max Tan and, and at the same time, it was really refreshing for me to watch and, and I hope that you, you like the video as well. <laughs> I most certainly do. Um, I, I was absolutely, I remember that there was a lump in the throat when I watched uh, The Rushes and uh, I knew we had, uh, we had something magical, we had created something magical. So thank you so much, Max, for being part of the front row and sharing your, your time with us. For those of you who wish to purchase pieces from the Max Tan collection, there are links in the front row that will take you directly to Max Tan's website. So once again, Max, congratulations, 10 wonderful years. Thanks for joining us. And for those of you who are listening in, Thank you very much for joining us on the very, very, very first day of the very, very, very first The Front Row. Do join us again for the rest of the nine days. We've got lots of wonderful designers from Singapore and around ASEAN presenting absolutely amazing collections. My name is Daniel Boy. Till tomorrow, see ya.